The Sistine Traction Vehicle. Photo from 1910. Anyway, when was the car invented? They say it all started at the turn of the century, between the 1880s and 1900. The final days of the Industrial Revolution started it all. Before that, we were primitive have-nots. By the time you finish the series, you will no longer believe the car was invented in 1886. You will know for sure that we were riding cars in the early 1800s, the 1700s, maybe earlier. Steam carriages were around long before gasoline cars. When were steam engines invented? Encyclopedia Britannica has this to say about steam power. Steam power, the use of water in gaseous form to power mechanical devices. Steam power was first popularized in the 18th century and reached its peak importance in the late 19th century when it became the main source of power for transportation. Steam power constitutes one of the safest forms of energy production, as it has low environmental cost compared with methods involving fossil fuels. Though steam power is no longer the main source of energy for transportation, it plays an important role in generating electricity. In school, I learned that steam power was invented in the 18th century. Here it steam power was first popularized in the 18th century, leaving wiggle room for prior use of steam power. They also say it's the safest and most low cost. Then why is it no longer used? They say because it's not technically feasible. The steam-powered car was around much longer than the gasoline car, but disappeared after the 1920s. The image discusses the viability of steam engines as a means of powering cars. The author, Michael Kay, argues that the problems often cited for external combustion steam engines, such as the time needed to bring a boiler up to pressure and the need to constantly replenish the water supply, were solved long ago. As evidence, he presents the Doble Detroit Model E steam car. The author explains that this car could start from cold in 90 seconds, faster than gasoline-powered cars of the period. The Doble Detroit steam cars incorporated condensers to convert used steam back into liquid water, eliminating the need for frequent water refills, with a single refill lasting for 1,500 miles. Additionally, the Doble Detroit steam car produced 1,000 pound-feet of torque, far surpassing the performance of gasoline-powered cars at the time. This demonstrates that in many ways, steam-powered cars could be superior to gasoline-powered ones. If that is true, I suspect petroleum magnates, <coughs> Rockefeller, could have played a role in the disappearance of steam engines. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Encyclopedia Britannica tells us. This first steam engine ever documented was the Olipile, invented by Greek geometer and engineer, Heron of Alexandria, in the 1st century CE. In 1698, British engineer, Thomas Savory, invented the atmospheric pressure engine, revolutionizing the efficiency of steam power. The Newcomen steam engine, invented in 1712 by British engineer, Thomas Newcomen, improved upon Savory's design. Steam power used in the 1st century. The year 100 really. And then nothing was heard of steam power for more than 1500 years, until Thomas Savory revolutionized the efficiency of steam power in 1698. As you've guessed, I don't believe it. I think steam engines were with us all along. Maybe there were times we lost the tech after cataclysmic upheavals, but humans are resilient and keep regaining lost knowledge. Despite endless book burnings, we have still preserved hundreds of stories of ancient steam-powered devices. One sample. The steam-powered pigeon of Archidas, the flying machine of antiquity. Archidas was an ancient Greek philosopher, who was born in 428 BC in Tarentum, Magna Graecia, now southern Italy. In addition to being a philosopher, Archidas was also a mathematician, astronomer, statesman, and a strategist, best remembered for inventing what is believed to be the first ever self-propelled flying device known as the flying pigeon. Archidas' steam-powered flying pigeon was a highly advanced invention for his time. It was called the flying pigeon because its structure resembled a bird in flight. The lightweight body of the flying pigeon was hollow and cylindrical in shape. The shape of the structure was very aerodynamic, for maximum flying distance and speed. Meanwhile, the rear of the flying pigeon had an opening that led to the internal bladder. This opening was connected to a heated airtight boiler. 
As the boiler created more and more steam, the pressure of the steam eventually exceeded the mechanical resistance of the connection, and the flying pigeon took flight. For comparison. This is the 1842 steam-powered airplane by Hansen and Stringfellow. Another sample. An excerpt from the book The Genius of China by Robert Temple shows that steam engines were used much earlier than commonly assumed. It describes a water-powered flour sifting and shaking machine that worked in reverse to the later steam engine's operation. Instead of using steam engine pistons to power wheels, the Chinese machine used rushing water to power pistons. The Chinese machine did not incorporate a crankshaft, a western invention, because it was not necessary. These machines were located south of the city of Qingming Su at the Buddhist monasteries of Luoyang, and are mentioned in a book from around 530 AD. They worked on the reciprocating principle of a piston moved by a connecting rod attached to a crank, powered by a water wheel. This principle was later widely used in the metallurgical industry, providing an efficient way to work the bellows of blast furnaces. The first published picture of such a machine appeared in Wang Chen's Treatise on Agriculture in 1313. Joseph Needham published a mechanical diagram explaining how the machine worked, reconstructed from details in Wang Chen's book and other sources. Encyclopedia Britannica omits these two and hundreds of others of examples. Why? Is Britannica not the gold standard of knowledge in the world? No, it isn't. All these mainstream publications suffer from the same delusion that our ancestors were primitive, and we've evolved and progressed to our current state. The Britannica entry says the steam engine was revolutionized in 1698, so it must have existed before that. But then, they claim, it took another 150 years for it to become popularized. The text in Britannica also reads. Throughout the 1760s, inventors and engineers fiercely competed to design even more efficient, reliable, and cost-efficient engines. The entry about Thomas Avery says. Thomas Avery, born circa 1650, Shillstone, Devonshire, England, died 1715, London, English engineer and inventor, who built the first steam engine. The entry on Thomas Newcomen says. Thomas Newcomen, baptized February 28, 1664, Dartmouth, Devon, England, died August 5, 1729, London, British engineer and inventor of the atmospheric steam engine, a precursor of James Watt's engine. Britannica is saying the Greeks invented the steam engine. Hold on, no, Thomas Savory invented it. Well, actually Thomas Newcomen invented it. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.